Bonsoir mes amis, buonasera ai miei amici. Guten Abend, meine liebe Freundin. Și uh, bine ați venit la canalul meu, dragi prieteni și urmăritori. Nu vă spun tovarăși. Uh, I wanted to do this again. Yesterday it didn't turn out too well. The video was a little dark. So um, I wanted to represent to you this uh, new addition to our inventory. It's a 2006 Aston Martin DB9. Let me flip the camera over here. 2006 Aston Martin DB9 in the beautiful jet black over what I like to call natural brown interior. A couple of things I need you guys to know about these Aston Martin DB9s when you look for them, when you try to locate them. A few things you have to keep in mind. From my own experience, the grill, after a while, it may start to, it might start chipping. So you'll see uh, paint peeling off. This is actually stainless steel chrome. Um, and it's a shame when that starts happening. It's kind of a pain in the neck to try to resolve it properly. You have to strip it and let's just say it's not easy. You get up to a point where you decide, is this worth it to fix this or should I just buy another new one? So that's one thing you should know about. Um, other things that I have noticed on these cars, as well as the Jaguar F-Types, the newer Jaguar F-Types or Maserati, uh, Gran Turismos, or any other newer soft tops, this glass here starts detaching after a while. This one here seems to be in excellent condition. No signs of uh, anybody trying to fix it. It looks like the original top and it's in uh, great condition. So that's one thing you should know. Um, I've noticed that especially here it starts detaching. There's like a strap that pulls on it and the more it pulls it it adds more pressure to the uh, more tension to the stop here and then it starts peeling away that's where the trouble starts no trouble here though with this one 43,000 miles about to turn 43 hasn't yet 19 inch wheels red calipers you don't usually see these on the Aston Martin DB9 it's the first one I get with red calipers brand new Bridgestone Potenza styles one other thing I noticed on these uh, DB9s, the door tends to fall back. Uh, there's a spring right here that keeps it open. Notice it's um, the door is lifted up when you open it. So there's always some tangential force that keeps it, um, that tends to close it. This one is in good condition. Look at that. I, all I need to do is just open it. it. It even stays open in this angle, or this angle, or this angle. So I think uh, these were replaced recently. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Passenger side, driver side as well. Look at that, it stays open at this point, even here. That's kind of nice to know that they work properly. This is the first one I've had where the doors actually work the way they're supposed to. So here's the natural brown I was telling you about. Love that color. I like it almost as much as I do the uh, red fox that I had on the uh, last DB9s. Another thing you need to uh, pay attention to is this center console. The, the wood here, the varnish starts cracking. And it's very easy to uh, to damage it further when you try to access this uh, screen, if you try to fix it. Uh, one other thing that brings me to the subject of the screen is this screen may not work. After a while, it tends to lift and doesn't lift properly or at all. So this one works as well. Let me uh, show you. And this is the other thing I was 
showing it the, the other way, the other day. When you start it, you uh, turn the key, but you notice it doesn't start right away. Uh, and this is something else I want to show you, which is really cool. When you start up the car, it says power, beauty, passion. I love that. So notice it's on the key all the way and it doesn't start the car. To start the car, you notice the start button glows up faint red color. So push that on there. I defaulted the screen to off, but if you want to turn it on, all you have to do is just press this button here. Enter and that just pops it open. And if you want to access, if you want to do anything here, you just press the and, um, enter button here and then you can select and play with a few settings here. Anyway, let's turn on the AC here. It's getting a little hot. Maybe not as high. And, um, well, I think I'm rushing here too much. Let me show you the engine. V6 12 liter engine. Look at that. Close it, guys. Gentle, gentle does it. You just press down on it. When you hear that click, you know you've done it. And I do want to show you this Power Beauty Soul thing when it's first start up the car. Watch this. You turn this on like that. Notice after you turn it off, the screen turns off on its own. It shuts off. And if you want to start it, check out the action. So it's on the key. Aston Martin Power Beauty Soul. System check. And there it is. No check engine lights or anything like that. The display looks great. I I'm having trouble focusing here, but I got it. So, uh, this is one other thing you should know about. The display, after a while, it may start getting that damaged look, like a melted look. This one looks fine. Both that and the radio. By the way, this is a uh, 6 CD changer. If you push the CD button here. You'll see that it's, um, well, I paused it apparently. If you go to the next CD, see that it says changing. So it has a six CD changer, which is really cool. Anyway, let's take this top down really quick. It's a one button operation. Not much to it really. All you gotta do is just lean back on this button here and then everything starts happening for you. A nice, a nice thing I like to mention, it has the screen, a windscreen in the back, which is really cool. Let's get rid of the screen. I don't like to see it stick out like that. So all you do is just go back here, shut down, press on the button, and uh, that shuts it off. Okay, and then you can either put it in drive, let it drive itself, or you can use the shift the paddles. Now 
was my water bottle, by the way. That's some of that exhaust. It's so cool. So you can let the car drive itself with a D button or you can uh, change the gears itself. You notice the gear it is displayed right there, P, R, N, D, 5. So that means it's in fifth gear right now. Notice with this car, as opposed to Maserati Gran Turismo's, once you Activate the shift the paddle, it stays in that gear, it doesn't default back to drive. Let me uh, lift the windows here so we don't get this window noise. So, let me show you what I was talking about. So, now it's in drive. So, if I let's see if I can catch this. See, I downshifted now, now I'm in fourth gear. And it stays there, it does, I mean, it will downshift if I slow down, but it never going to default back to drive. And as you see, drive is no longer lit up, the D button, still in the fourth gear. I can of course downshift even more if I wanted to, that's the third gear. Aston Martin calls this the uh, sport shift automatic transmission. Notice as I slow down, it's gonna go into two and then one. Now, if I forget about it and start driving when the light turns green, it's going to stay into first gear. So, that's why I think you should kind of let it, let it do its own thing. Put it in D. Very simple controls, as I mentioned before. Love this little clock here. Oh, this one has a, an ad, adapt for an iPhone. See, that's an iPhone charger. And it has a um, XM radio installed. Series XM radio. It needs a, it needs a um, subscription. And with these two buttons here, you can... Uh, Engage the subscription. It also has Bluetooth, which is kind of cool. And here we go. I have it in drive. Look at that sunset, though. James Bond action! Woo! Nice. Alright, well, I'm going to sign off here. I made an incoming phone call here. Thank you for watching me, guys. From Val Eurosport.
this is just as much fun as you think it is, if not more. Thank you for watching, and eyes on the road. Bye, see you soon.